All right, Shockmaster fans, we're going to watch the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. Let's check it out. Our movie starts out in 1939. Poor <laughs> woman. Slaughterhouse needs a break. Something's happening to her. I think she needs more than a break, actually. She ends up giving birth and dying in the process. Oh, supervisor does what all supervisors do. He took the newborn infant and threw it in the dumpster. Where this woman happened to be wandering by and overheard. Man. 30 years later, that infant grew up to be Leatherface. He's working at the same slaughterhouse, which now just closed. You gotta get the hell out of here, you dumb animal. Meanwhile, some college-age kids are going to be traveling through Texas soon. Leatherface was not happy about having to leave the slaughterhouse, so he comes back and kills the supervisor. We got a, uh, we got a situation on our hands here. I just came back from the slaughterhouse. That tarted nephew of yours killed a man. Now. Well, the two of them track him down. His real name is Thomas, by the way. But then Arlie Ermey shoots him. And since there was only one cop in the entire county, he decides to assume his identity. That's how he became Sheriff Hoyt. We ain't gonna go hungry tonight. Matter of fact, we ain't never gonna starve again. They took the sheriff's body home and Meanwhile, the four kids I mentioned before are driving through to Austin because two of the boys, or the two boys, are going to be drafted into... Me and Dean are going to Mexico. He's not going to go with Eric, and uh, he's not going to go to Vietnam. They're being chased by some bikers who they run in a bar, and the next thing you know, they hit a cow. A would-be sheriff then shows up to confront the biker and shoots her. The sheriff basically kidnaps the other three. Meanwhile, Chrissy was thrown from the vehicle and he doesn't know she's out there. He ends up taking them to the, to the homestead. Chrissy ends up finding them. They haven't found her yet, though. They actually had a family member tow their car in. Chrissy was hiding it. That's how she got there so quickly. Meanwhile, torture. Chrissy ends up flagging down the biker, the boyfriend of the girl who the cop shot. I saw you both at the store. Meanwhile, a couple of the kids get loose and free. She tries to escape, but she gets hooked by her face. Eventually, they're all caught again. and the biker, that is, who shoots Uncle Monty. What do you want, boy? I want my girl. Take me to her. I'm going to blow your head off. So they briefly get the upper hand. Keyword, briefly. Another face attacks the biker. And he gets the saw. Eric is tied up in the basement. Leatherface is doing him in. Leatherface needs a new mask. Chrissy finally finds a way out. She's about to flee, but then she hears Bailey's voice and figures she has to try to go back and save her. Harley Ermy decides to cut off Uncle Mondi's legs. Bailey is next. Chrissy's now captured. Chrissy gets a hold of a screwdriver somehow. Our last male survivor, Dean, is getting the upper hand here. Upper hand never seems to last with this chainsaw family. Now we have Chrissy, Dean, and Leatherface battling. Our young man isn't going to make it.
Christy manages to escape in a car, but then Leatherface is in the back seat, and Christy isn't going to make it. Instead, she runs over a policeman and an innocent bystander who stopped for a speeding ticket. Leatherface is our only survivor. From 1969 to 1973, the Hewitt family murdered 33 people across the state of Texas. All right, let's talk about Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Beginning. This came out in 2006. It's actually the sequel to the 2003 version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I reviewed a couple of weeks back. Um, stars uh, Arlie Ermey again. Jordana Brewster plays the lead uh, heroine, uh, Chrissy. Um, and basically, this kind of tells the story of how the, I guess it's the Hewitt family. Is that the name, Hewitt? Yeah, I think so. Uh, or I thought it was Sawyer. I don't know, whatever their, their name is in this version. Um, it, it, it tells the story of how they came to be. Um, how the family came to be. And we start out in 1939. A woman gives birth uh, at a, a slaughterhouse to a baby. Um, it turns out to be Thomas, uh, who is Leatherface. Uh, uh, she dies giving birth, and the supervisor in charge takes the baby and throws it in the dumpster, where uh, one of the huge family members uh, rescues it, takes it home. 30 years later, um, 1969, now that's where the movie takes off, the slaughterhouse is about to close. Leatherface now works at that slaughterhouse um and he doesn't like the fact that they're closing he ends up killing the guard not the guard the uh supervisor who threw him in the dumpster 30 years earlier um and um uh when the cop comes to arrest him he pulls out uh, uh arlie ermy who is a family member i think he's an older brother and um uh arlie ermy and the, and the cop go out looking for him and then arlie ermy takes the shotgun and kills the sheriff Sheriff Hoyt, and assumes Sheriff Hoyt's identity. So if you saw the Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2003, he was playing the character of Sheriff Hoyt, but he wasn't really a Hoyt. That's where um, that's where he came from. So um, they take uh, the dead body home. They cook him up and said, from now on, we're never going to be hungry again. And that's, I guess, how they started cannibalizing people. I guess when uh, Arlie Ermey was in the Army in the Korean War, I think they said that he had learned uh, to eat people, you know, it was either eat or, or, or starve to death, type of thing, whenever one of their uh, compadres died, um, they would eat him. So anyway, uh, a bunch of kids are f traveling through town because they're on their way to Austin, where one of them is being, actually two of them are being drafted into the army to go serve in Vietnam. They hit a cow, they crash, they end up getting captured by our cannibal family. Um, one of them, Chrissy, uh, uh, didn't get captured, but she ends up on the... Uh, uh, chainsaw family household, uh, or, or uh, uh, she ends up at their place um, later on because she tr goes to try to save them. Um, and there's a series of fights, and Leatherface kills a few people. At one point, uh, there's this guy named Uncle Monty Hoyt, uh, the new sheriff, Hoyt out of the army, cuts off his legs. And if you saw the previous film in 2003, we see the guy in the wheelchair with no legs. So that's how that happened. He cut off his own family member's legs for whatever reason. I don't know. He was just pissed at them. Whatever. Ultimately, slow but sure, they, they kill all the kids. There's only four of them. Uh, Leatherface uh, takes off the head, or I'm sorry, the, the skin off the head of one of them to have a new mask for him. Ultimately, uh, Chrissy is the last one. She manages to escape gets in a truck and she's leaving at night and then down the road she sees a, a police officer who has a speeder pulled over and she's about to pull over uh, but then Leatherface comes out of the back seat hits her with the chainsaw through the seats and uh, kills her and then she runs into the cop and the uh, pedestrian kills them the last scene in the movie is Leatherface walking away from that accident and that's how it ends and then there's a little prologue from I believe it's John Larroquette again uh, telling us how the over the next five years they killed 39 people or something like that. So anyway, that is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning. Now, critics were not very kind to this movie at all, as uh, really scathing reviews. But, you know, I look at it as a typical horror film. You know, it's got some decent gore in it. Uh, no nudity in this movie. Just uh, it's got that got that Texas Chainsaw vibe to it. Just leave it at that. Now, it pales in comparison to the original, which I think is a really creepy uh, film. Um, again, this is just a run-of-the-mill horror film, nothing special here. But again, I certainly liked it a lot better than critics did. But, I, you know, I'm into gore and horror movies, so there you go. Anyway, that's it. Um, the following film after this came about seven years later. That's when Texas Chainsaw came out, which I reviewed. I don't know if that's actually part of this particular timeline or not. 
who the hell knows anymore? And then there's Leatherface, which came out in 2017, which I'll be reviewing probably next week. And then there's a brand new 2022 version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which I think is on Netflix or Amazon, one of those streaming services, which I have not seen, but I'll be reviewing that in the future too. So anyway, that's it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. I will leave a link to something down below if you want to buy it. And um, leave some comments. Let me know what you think about it. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. Watch it. Bye.